Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is our friend of the program, BYU superstar and NFL Super Bowl champion Steve Young. Steve, nice to have you back on BYU Sports Nation. Oh, it's great, boys. You know, I, you say, drop off for seminary, pick up for seminary, drop off a of high school, drop off at middle school, carpool for elementary school, and now you're catching me asleep in the driveway. So, <laughs> good, good luck to you. Dead props. <laughs> good for, luck to you. First and foremost, I think you should be up for an Oscar after your performance in the at and <laughs> College Football Playoff commercials. That was amazing, well, Steve. Uh, well, it was super fun for me that Joe would do it with me and, and that we would – we just had a fun time, and it was it wasn't it it was awkward doing it because it was awkward, but it wasn't awkward doing it together. So it was kind of fun, and we had a good day with Jerry. And uh, really, I mean, it, for me, uh, uh, I enjoyed being together, laughing, talking about the old days. You know, away from even taping it and and what's happened. I just I really enjoyed the time together. And so when it aired, I, I was kind of nervous because you do those things. You're like, that's going to be so stupid. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, we know about and, that, uh, Steve. <laughs> you, you, don't, you, uh, you don't know. You know, you're like, oh, I don't know. And then uh, I got, I was, I was up in, uh, uh, in Utah for skiing. And I, someone texted me, hey, that was hilarious. I'm like, oh, good. It's starting to, <laughs> that's good. I didn't know that uh, it would go off so well. So that's great. I, I truly believe that those could have been real bats the boat broke, but I'm I'm not sure. Can you shed some light on that? Oh no, no, they were not. But uh, <laughs> we told Bo, you got Bo, you've gotten so old, you're digging the balsa wood. So uh, you know, <laughs> really we, funny stuff. We had a lot stuff. of fun with Bo, but we, we and that, that whole. I mean, think about it. That was that group of guys because Emmett's a friend, and Bo. We just had a really fun day, and I think that's probably why that they're 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 good spots because everybody there's nothing. Yeah, unnatural about us doing those kinds of things. So I, I really do enjoy. It's like a little, uh, you know, retro get together. You know, like uh, from an alumni thing. So it was that, that that you know the the commercials are really secondary to to get together. Steve Young with us on BYU Sports Nation. You have talked a lot about BYU and Utah from a rivalry standpoint. The football game is now back on. The Vegas Bowl was interesting. They'll play a second game of the year next year. But now basketball decides to take a cooling off period because Utah, and this is a quote, is concerned for the safety of the players. What do you think about this basketball cancellation between BYU and Utah? Well, I would obviously rather the G the ADs deal with it each other and how to kind of de-escalate amongst themselves so we can do it as a team. We've, uh, you know, throughout all the years, despite the, you know, the, the rigor of the rivalry behind the scenes, we always dealt with each other kind of, even in the old WAC and, and, and uh, Mountain West days, it was really the two of us against the against the world. So, there's a lot of good DNA in the past, and so this is probably not a great sign for that kind of relationship that I that I thought was really strong. Look, uh, you know, we hold ourselves out to be above the fray, and and we 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 are the fray, and that's not where we want to be, and we have to take accountability for it, both from the bowl game a year ago, from what happened just last uh, month, and. And you know, just stand up and say, "Look, that's not who we are. We're gonna we're gonna distance ourselves from it, you know, fund fundamentally and and institutionally. And that's just not. And and that's got to be, you know, athletic department wide. I mean, this is we're gonna we're gonna. Unfortunately, a couple of small, you know, a couple of in, uh, isolated incidents can be, you know, on the main stage, start to get a, you know, you talk to my guys at ESPN and they 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 kind of talk about. Oh well, BYU is no. I mean, it's like you just cringe. You're just like, no, uh, absolutely not. But I think you got to own it. Don't complain. Uh, take it and 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 let's let's move on. Let's let's make sure that uh, we button up from the, in the you know in the future. I mean, that's all you really can do because otherwise, you build um, you know mitigation and resentment and and all these other emotions that are wrong. They're not going to help you, and they're not going to help you out in the in the marketplace where we we really are as an independent. In uh, football, especially, obviously, but in other places, we have a uh, we are marketing. We will have to market ourselves as uh, you know who we think we are. So let's let's go do that. Now BYU is uh, led by a new head coach in Kalani Sitake. What did you think of the hire of Kalani? I love it. You know, I have to admit, I'm a, I, you know, Dave Dunn is Kalani's lawyer and, and uh, negotiator for his contracts, and Dave's been with me for almost thirty years. 
So I had the pleasure of kind of being behind the scenes, helping Dave understand the rigors of, of the job and, 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 and the, uh, the process. And I thought that was, hopefully that was pretty helpful there. Uh, I thought that he helped me get to know Kalani better. Uh, and I really appreciated that time. I'd known of Kalani, obviously. And I was a big fan. Uh, I don't know how I was the first one, but I was certainly one of the loud voices, hopefully, for Ty to join the two of them. And I, and I, 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 I suspect I was the one that put them together on the phone to get them started on a conversation and a relationship that I know went very well from the beginning. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm on the hook here. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, uh, and I, but I, but I really do feel like uh, Kalani's embraced everything about what uh, you'd want. He's a football, uh, you know, he's just a leader and a football guy. And I really, I'm hopeful that uh, Ty, the two of them, are look, they're 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 looking ahead at uh, incredible schedule, with a, an incredible opportunity. And uh, and I, as I said to Dave Dunn, you know, both of them have enough water to carry for, you know, for three, let alone the two of them. So I think that, uh, you know, they both very humble guys that will work well together. Ty knows his place. Kalani knows he's a leader. Um, I, I'm pretty upbeat. I, I, I'm very, very hopeful, obviously. Why was Ty Detmer the right fit to lead this BYU offense into a new era? Okay, so historic, but i got to give you some context. Back when I was playing for the 49ers, Ty played, backed me up for a couple of years, and I've known, I've known Ty about Ty before, always admired him as a college player. I recognized that he was capable. The game was slower for him than other people. It was just the 22 guys on the field most times overwhelm people, and sometimes over a long period of time you actually start to handle it. Ty naturally just was gifted with the ability to ha have that not be overwhelming. And he always sensed, you know, he's always had a sense of uh, if he had the body, I mean, who knows, who knows what he could have done in, in, as a pro except for those chicken legs. But I think that other than <laughs> – There it is. Uh, uh, but, but if he had – but the truth is when I'd come off the field, many times I would be sheepish and embarrassed because I knew Ty knew exactly what I was supposed to do. And I was like, I can't believe I was so stupid. I mean, Ty's going to be, I'm, gonna, I'm embarrassed to, to go, you know, talk to him about it. Because Ty knew all aspects of offensive football. And so in that way, I, I just got a tremendous amount of respect for him. So I don't care, honestly, that he's been coaching in high school. The guy understands intuitively offensive football. And he can teach it. He can coach it. And he can call it. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Now he's got to go do it. At, a, at the college level, but my gosh, of all the guys, and I'm, I'm telling you, the in, most intuitive football players I was ever around, one was Joe Montana and two was Ty Detmer. And that's just, if I, and if I ranked them, I'd put them right there together, honestly. And so I, I just, I, I, have, I, have no qual I have no worries about Ty being able to coach one or two of the better quarterbacks in college football together or separately or individually. I, have, I just have no qualms about it at all. Yeah, and you answered the question that I was going to ask about, you know, the the question about his experience and whatnot. But he did comment earlier this week about Taysom Hill being the most athletic quarterback to play at BYU. No offense to Steve Young, although he does make fun of my chicken legs. He's just put together more than Steve. Do you want? Would you like to comment on that? I agree. <laughs> I mean, I agree on the chicken legs and on the comma, uh, location. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that's what I really love, Ty, and it's fun. But really, Taysom was – I mean, I watched that first half. I remember – I talked about this last time I was on the radio with you guys. I remember watching and thinking to myself, he's going to win the Heisman. No one's going to stop him. So it's just – it's all about health. And I've seen other great athletes struggle staying healthy and then get on a run and never have an injury for years. You just, I, you just don't know. But, uh, but certainly Taysom is, uh, uh, you know, the two of them can work together. Two of them have a great spirit. I mean, it would, it would not be a problem at all as far as just in the, in the, in the uh, film room with Ty. They could work that out, but I would encourage them both to see the field and a lot and just deal with it the way, you know, that uh, two great players can and you, uniquely different guys. But I don't know where Taysom is about it. Last time we talked, we thought Taysom might be headed somewhere else. Uh, but I just honestly, I, ever since we've spoken, I have no idea. I haven't spoken to Taysom, so I just don't know where everybody is. Last night at the basketball game, he was sitting right behind me, and the uh, student section made it clear that they want, that they love Taysom <laughs> and they want him back. So let me ask you this, Steve. 
with guys like Taysom Hill and Tanner Mangum, two very mature and now experienced quarterbacks, is there any sort of detriment to having both of them on the roster together? No, I think because of the nature of the two guys, you got to take, you know, neither of them are predatory at all. Neither, and both of them, and I think because they're in different, such different places as a freshman coming into the sophomore year and as a senior, you can say, you know, Tanner can say, look, I can do this for a year. And, and Taysom can say, I can deal with the rigor of this for a year. I don't think, I, I hope that if Taysom says, I'll come back, but I want a full-time starting position, I don't. I would I would love to think that this the the I keep saying rigor but the <laughs> everything's rigorous with BYU right now but the, with the schedule coming up and uh, I just I get a feeling like having a two-headed uh, monster could be a great thing and uh, again that doesn't always help but I always felt like Joe and I created uh, a it was system-wide the creative tension that we had between us was all the beneficiary of that tension was always the team. Because the two of us never argued, we supported each other behind the scene. We were doing what we did when it was I, when it was my turn to back up. I played that role. I did my best. I cringed. I didn't like it. I gritted my teeth. It was not fun. I wish I was doing something else. But because of the guys that were in the in the locker room, it worked. And so I feel like the same kind of thing here. These guys are very capable of having some tension, which is I think can be creative. And then the rest and, and the beneficiaries of it. Are the, are, are the team and, and BYU in general. Steve, always great to talk to you. Just one last favor. Next time you're in Studio B in Provo, will you do your Ray Lewis dance for us? Oh, man, is that brutal? I just – Ray thinks I'm the funniest guy alive. <laughs> Everything I do, he thinks he, – he just – he thinks I'm so – I mean, we have so much fun. Honestly, I mean, the fun we have is, is off the charts. And so I got started doing that thing, like, Ray, I'll do your dance. I didn't even know it. I didn't. Re- I had never <laughs> seen it a couple of times. And so I did. And he thought that was the funniest thing because who knows what I was doing. So I never actually watched it. I just kept doing what I was doing. And he thought that was hilarious. So then they had me on tape doing it. Then someone caught me doing it at the Packer game. Pretty soon it was a thing. Finally, I watched it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm not even close. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Those steak dances in Connecticut didn't pay off, I guess. Oh. Seriously. We're, put, Seriously. we're putting the Academy, Award, uh, Academy Awards on notice for uh, the commercials and the dance. Steve, great to talk to you. Oh, see you, boys. Take care. Okay. Happy New Year.